Hi, my name is Stuart J. Murphy. I write books for young children. People don't often talk about creativity and math in the same sentence, yet the arts and creativity are critical to the study of mathematics, especially in the early years. Our children need to be fully engaged in mathematics. They need to be creating math models, writing math stories, doodling and sketching about math, and using multiple representations of mathematical ideas to express their thoughts. The realization that creativity is important in math education is at the very foundation of the STEM to STEAM movement. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics can open the doors to all sorts of wonderful 21st century careers. But our kids need the arts to help them apply STEM skills creatively. Creative approaches to math instruction help students make connections to other areas of learning and gain insights about how mathematical concepts apply to real-world situations. One of my favorite examples comes from my friend, fourth-grade teacher Kathy Coons. One of Kathy's projects involves having her students select an animal. One year, they voted for a hamster. They were then asked to find the average height of a mature hamster. Next, they split into teams of four or five students, and each team had to select a sport. The teams then researched the regulation playing field for that sport. Their assignment was to create a diagram and then build a model of a regulation playing field for a hamster. Just imagine a room filled with hamster-sized tennis courts, soccer fields, and bowling alleys. In the process, the students learned about proportion and scale, and about measurement, and they used multiplication and division. They researched about math, and they used math in a creative and engaging way. Each of the 63 stories in my Math Start series presents a different math topic in the context of a story. At the end, there is a two-page section of activities, ways to extend the learning beyond the stories with projects that can be done in school or at home. There are so many things you can do to help children understand math. For example, write a number sentence. 5 plus 3 equals 8. Now ask your child or your students to draw a picture to illustrate that sentence. They might draw something like 5 fish plus 3 fish equals 8 fish. The picture will make it obvious that there's a fact family about this sentence. 5 plus 3 equals 8 but you can easily see that 3 plus 5 also equals 8, and that 8 take away 3 is 5, and that 8 take away 5 equals 3. That's a fact family. That helps children understand how our number system works. I also think it's really interesting to make maps. Maps of anything. Maps of your desk, your bedroom, your classroom, the parking lot. Maps teach students to consider important issues like dimension and scale and where things are and how they relate to one another spatially. Timelines are a terrific way to visualize sequencing. After reading my stories, Rabbit's Pajama Party and Get Up and Go, I ask children to think about the order of the events and create timelines that show what happened first, next, after that, and last. Then I ask them to think about something they do that requires a sequence of events. For example, first I set the table, then I put some food on my plate, then I ate my breakfast, and then I cleaned up. Now show how much time each event took. For example, I set the table in three minutes, but it took me 15 minutes to eat my breakfast. Now children are learning about the important concept of elapsed time. The bottom line is that we want our children to talk about math, to sketch about math, to write about math. We want them to express their ideas, demonstrate their understandings, and explain and explore their creativity about mathematics. There are lots of things we can do, both at home and at school, to be creative about mathematics. Math and creativity, two sides of a coin.